Gives me great pleasure to introduce episode 118 of the Sussex by the Sea podcast. And I have got you's number one, Charlie Granger here. Uh, nearly said Martin Granger there. We were just talking about <laughs> Martin Granger. Um, Charlie Granger, um, fantastic stopper for Hastings. Personally, as I'd say, as we're going to go into, I didn't think he would stay, but he's still here and it, an absolute cracking keeper. Uh, how are you this morning, sir? I'm well this morning. Working outside, so I'm cold. Yeah. But um, not too bad. Can't complain. Okay, so Charlie, uh, Charlie, you started your career at Leighton Orient. Yeah, I did. I joined there. Well, actually, just before that, I think I was ten. I signed for Norwich on a two-year contract. Only lasted six months because, obviously, living in Hertfordshire and driving to well, being in school, and my dad having to pick me up early from school and then take me to training and get home at two o'clock in the morning. It wasn't fair on my parents to keep doing it. So we uh, <clears throat> mutually agreed with Norwich to terminate that. And then I think literally about two weeks after, I joined Leighton Orient and I ended up staying there till I was 23. So yeah, I had a good old, good old I was going to say, you, you were there, there. I mean, who was who was the goalkeeping coach at that point? I mean, or... Kevin Dearden. Okay. He was my first goalie coach at yeah. Leighton Orient. He was like my second dad, actually. Yeah. And um, in terms of that, that period, because I know you went out a couple of times on loan. Mm. You did get a few games for Leighton Orient, didn't you? I'm sure you had a... Yeah, I... So it started... I got thrown into the first team very early, about 15. And loads of, they kept getting loans, they kept getting injured. And so they chucked me on the bench uh, from, I think 15 was my, Crew, Crew Alexander away was my first time involved with the first team on the bench at 15. And ever since then, I kind of stuck with them, jumping on the bench, going on loan here and there. And then I think I got, I played a few games. I think I played a couple of games in League One. Then I played in the FA Cup. Then Ian Hendon come in a little bit later on down the line. Hmm. And I think I played only a few games in League Two. But then once we got relegated into the conference, I then become the number one for a season. But things change quite quickly after that. Yeah, they certainly do. Um, yeah. Well, as, as I say, you you um you then um, work with Paul Barnes at Dulwich. Yes. Yeah. So Indeed. that's how you. Yeah. Um, what was that whole Dulwich? This was obviously in the league above. What What was that yeah. whole Dulwich um, experience like? It was a very strange one. It was a very up and down time. Personally, I spent, I think I spent four and a half years there. I loved the club. I thought it was fantastic. Mm. Um, under Gavin and Cads, there was a real clear guidance on what was expected from the club. Um, performances started to drop and results started not to go our way. So unfortunately, they, the club and Gav come to an agreement that that was it. And then Barnsley coming at a real tough time. You think a manager who's been at the same club as a manager for 17 years, I think it was, yeah. has got to come in and take over at the helm. It's very difficult, but as a club, it is a very good club. It's like a fantastic fan base. Um, so yeah, it was. I enjoyed my my time there. Well, I didn't the last season, but other than that, um, yeah, I, it was quite a good place to be. So uh, when that season ended, um, Dulwich did ship out the big changes, and mm. you, you you come along with Paul. How did Paul persuade you to come to Hastings? So I was a little bit in between of what I what I wanted to do. I'd spoken to Dulwich about staying and spoken to various other people and then Paul rung me and um, told it to me really about the people, the place, the culture of the club and I kind of thought, oh, it sounds, I know it's far away, but it sounds quite interesting. I don't mind a little bit of a change here. And then, yeah, that that was, it was pretty simple. It was one phone call and then after a couple of conversations, we was we were signed, sealed, delivered. Yeah, so come in, um, obviously massive changes at Hastings as well before mm. you came in that you wouldn't know anything about, really. Yeah. Um, but uh, a goalie called Louis Rogers, who was uh, quite a, been there for a number of years, uh, good, mm. good goalie, good goalie, and him leaving, uh, you coming in, um, started really well uh, to begin with. I mean, it, it yeah. did seem like a bit of a disjointed team to me. Um, mm. And I suppose you, I mean, you've had you've had various centre-halves uh, play in front of you this season. Um, yeah. That, I mean, how, how is that? Because I mean, we might, we talk a little bit about the the Barnes era, obviously, but like, yeah. for, first of all, that thing of when we seem to be, you know, no, there's not a settled centre back. We've yeah. had that issue. I mean, what's that like for you? How do you cope with that? I don't think it's too bad, if I'm being mm. honest, because I know people coming in and out and whatever, but the other 10 players on the pitch, we know our jobs. So we've just got to help guide if they need it, whoever mm. is stepping into that position for the time being. And the gaffer makes it very clear on what our objectives are for the game and what we're trying to achieve. So it, it can be a little bit up and down when someone doesn't really know the boys, but we've got such a good group that 
it's very easy to fit in. So I, I don't think it's been that much of an issue, personally. Mm. Okay. Well, the, it would speak a little bit about the Barnes era. Um, yeah. I mean, it kind of went pear shaped fairly quickly. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm only a fan, but that's what I could what I could see was that it didn't seem some people weren't pulling their weight. Um, yeah. We say um, you've been in various dressing rooms. I mean, how did how how do you cope with that? I don't need to go into specifics, but like that thing of when you can see that you're on a downward turn, how, how do you cope? How do you sort of kind of, do you just focus on your game or how do you deal with that sort of situation? I guess I've been in downward spirals in other teams before. So I kind of know what to do in those certain situations. It's people almost, you can see it. You can see the players that are like stinking with the ship almost. You kind of got to try and get around them, but you've got to try and make sure you're doing your job as best as you possibly can for the team, then you've kind of got to worry about others because as long as you're doing your job, then that's one less thing you've got to worry about. Mm. So once I know I can do my job, then that's kind of like, I've got to try and lift him. I've got to try and lift him. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't just me doing it. There's There was a yeah. number of other players in the dressing room also trying to say, come on, mate, come on, mate. We've got to stick together. We can do this. Mm. But it just it just didn't happen, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean... I could, talk, I could talk for ages about that that part of the season. It's, it's, it's almost like it was a bad dream. And uh, mm. we obviously Paul Barnes leaves. A number of, I mean, a few people that I think should have gone went. Um, and I, I, well, I speak for myself, but a lot of us fans thought, well, you know, Charlie's a good goalie. He he's going to go as well. Um, what what made you stay initially? It was actually quite surprising. If I'm being completely honest, because I didn't have any intentions of leaving and. I kind of thought I might have been one that had been asked to leave as well because I honestly didn't think I'd performed that well at the start of the season. Mm. Um, so I was kind of expecting the call. But then once I'd spoken to Ben and Chris, the new gaffer, uh, yeah. they kind of was telling me about how they wanted me to stay and the way we're going to start playing football. And I was like, oh, this is this sounds like a bit of me. And they want me to stay. So I'm all on board. Once I sign up to something, I don't really want to jump ship. I, I want to stick it out to the end. So... Once I had oh. them conversations, where I was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm all over this." Yeah. Oh, great stuff! <laughs> great <laughs> stuff. Uh, I mean, we we know all our Saints fans know Chris from time. Uh, yeah. We know he's a uh, he's very driven um, and wants to play in a certain way. Um, how did you take him first of all? First off, I mean, have you ever had any dealings with Chris before, or is, how did you find him in your first conversation? No, I, I haven't had any dealings with Chris before the time of him here um first conversation was was quite good actually he just told me straight up his demands of how he wants to play um and we've kind of got to buy into it if we want to to do so obviously if not then this conversation's to be had and the way that he likes to play is the way I also like to try and play I like to be on the ball as much as possible trying to progress the ball help help the other players and so on and so on so it was quite an easy conversation with him um yeah, I think there was kind of like a mutual respect instantly once we spoke over the phone. Excellent. Well, um, I've got a few fan questions for you, Charlie, um, mm-hmm. if that's okay. Um, uh, a few. I don't know if you're... Are you a Gooner, by the way, Charlie? No, I'm not. No, so unfortunately there's a Gooner question here. I don't know. No don't worries, know. that's fine. Don't want to trigger you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got uh, Mr. Lee Parnell, who does the vlogs, is asking this. Uh, he's saying, what, what what's your view on the Arsenal goalie situation and, and like, how would you find it if you were the one that's benched after not really doing anything particularly wrong? Um, Funny enough, I've been in that situation myself. Hmm. Obviously very different levels between us. Um, but I think it's bizarre if I'm being honest. Hmm. People were saying Ray bet would have bought his feet. He's nowhere near as good yeah, as Ramsdale so, yeah. would have bought his feet. Not even close. Ramsdale's got loads of character, personality. He's, he was one of their best players last year. He kept them anywhere near to the title race. Yeah, he had a couple of mistakes, but what goal he doesn't make mistakes. Um, I thought it was unbelievable. And the way he's been done, uh, football isn't a fair game, but no. I think there was a different way of going about it. It's kind of like, oh yeah, you'll get your chance to battle, but it's not been the case at all. It's like, no, you sit on the bench now. I've got my new number one. So, yeah, I don't understand that one, but, I mean, they're flying at the moment, so it's a um, tough one to argue with him with. Yeah, fair enough, so, yeah. Um, what, who's, um, who do you think should be the goalie for the Euros? I would have said Ramsdale if mm. he had continued to play because he's way better with a bought his feet than Jordan Pickford, and I think he's a better overall goalie, but 
to be fair to Pickford, this season he's been decent. Um, he's been very decent. So Andy knows he's been there and done it. He's got the experience. So at this present time, I'd have to say Jordan Pickford. Now, I haven't actually asked you, who was your, who was your goal? You, you, did you always love, want to be a goalie? Nah. No. So, obviously, my dad played and I wanted to be an outfielder. Mm. But I had two left feet when I was growing up. I was rubbish. So, uh, dad just threw me in goal. And then kind of just took to it quite quickly. I was the only one who didn't mind flying around, diving at people's feet, getting muddy. And um, yeah, it just kind of stuck. Yeah. And so who's your, your sort of heroes growing up? Was it your dad? Obviously, we mentioned your dad, Martin yeah. Granger, uh, big time Birmingham City yeah. terrorist, uh, for what a better <laughs> word. Um, it liked, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing Jack Dixon and Martin Granger in that same midfield. Mm. Um, what? what uh, yeah, so in terms of your heroes growing up, what you would say, your dad? You're going to say your dad, or is yeah, a hundred percent. I was yeah. unfortunately, I was a little bit too young to remember going to order the games, but there was mm. a few when I got a little bit older because he had to retire quite early because of his his knees. Mm. Um, there was a few that I remember going to, so it was definitely one because I always wanted to be like my dad. Um, although he didn't quite pass me all of his genes, unfortunately. Um, but I'd say either was at the time from when I was what was I. 12, 13, 14, Joe Hart was the main man. I wanted to be him. Same same barnet, same boots, same gloves. I'd done my socks like him. He was the main man. And I thought, oh, his, his presence, personality, his stays, his distro, everything. Growing up at that time, it was definitely, he was the one I looked at. Okay. I mean, how heartbroken were you when old Pep? Uh... I didn't understand it. Yeah. But now you see what Edison can do with a ball at his feet. Now I understand it, obviously. I just thought, again, at that time, he was one of the best goalies in the world. Easily, he was on fire. And the way he just come in and was just like, nah, like, done, see you later. He's like a, almost a Man City legend. Mm. And But as I said, football isn't a fair game. It's ruthless. But it's another situation that could have been dealt with better. But then who am I to tell Pep, who's won absolutely <laughs> everything in the game that you can imagine? I'm pretty sure he knows a lot more about football than I do. Yeah, I suppose that, that level is, is, as you say, it's brutal. It's you just brutal. No friends. Um, no. Nah. Just uh, got a couple, a couple more questions. Like we, we obviously think you're a top goalkeeper, yeah? Uh, and you've pulled off some fantastic, you know, kept us in games um, count, countless times already this season. Um, who do you see as the, the best goalkeeper in the league? Or, you know, is it is it you? Oh, you put me under pressure here now. Um Let's have a think. I'm trying to think who we'd come up against. Or is it no one that's outstanding, do you feel, or stands out from the crowd? I like I like um I like a bit of Ricky Goldie. I can't remember his name now. Um I like him a lot. He's a very steady Eddie, never really mm. makes many mistakes. Does it just does his job. That's kind of what I like from Goldies, is like don't go looking for work, just yeah. Try not to stand out and do your job. And I think if you do that, then the team's had a good day. Yeah. Um yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd put myself within the category, definitely. Um, it's something I'd have to think about. I can't remember everyone that we played against. My memory's horrendous. But he's one that comes to mind just because I just thought, I looked at him and I just thought, he's very steady away, mm. and no mistakes. I just I just like what he did. Talking of Paul Barnes again quickly, the, he, he's a bit unlucky. Isn't he? I mean, like, he, he came in in the Dulwich situation. Yeah. Where he was going, he, he was on a hide into nothing. He yeah. came in here where I think, he was let down by quite a number of people, I think. Um, yeah. And, he kind of, and now he's gone to Corinthian Casuals. Um, and I don't think they've won a game. He's done about 10, 11 games. Um, I think they're bottom. I mean, do you keep in contact with him? Yeah, I've spoken to Barnsley over the last few weeks, actually. Yeah. Just touching base, just said to him, like, well done getting back into football straight away. I know it must have been tough after the last two seasons and stuff like that. Um so, yeah, we, we do still stay in touch. And he's definitely been a bit unlucky. Like, the Dulwich situation, he come in, we started flying, and then all of a sudden, a few injuries hit. There was some problems above him. Mm. Um, and yet the same kind of thing happened. The wheels just fell off. And then as soon as you get a couple of injuries and the, the wheels fall off, as I said, you can see people that are going down with the ship. Um, yeah, yeah, it doesn't help. Like, also, I, I had quite a bad injury last year. In that period, I snapped my... Um, one of my cruciate ligaments and my meniscus at the same time, so that nice. definitely didn't, yeah, that definitely didn't help. So it's kind of just all just come on top and just went down. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I'm not going to keep talking about Paul Barnes here. Um, <laughs> Charlie, what what do you think of your season? Um, I mean, as you say, was a little bit shaky to begin with. Um, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I I'll put it down to like 
that we had like Craig Stone still there, who kind of I think I think it's probably a season too far in terms of being at this level. I think he's you know that's why he's doing all right at Ramsgate in the division below. Um, you know, you had a few sort of centre half changes, a lot of mix ups. Um, ever since Aggies come in. You know, I think your game's definitely been raised and the fact that you're more involved in the game as well. Um, I mean, yeah. you've already said you actually quite enjoy that side of the game. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of fans that, uh, who watch uh, Hastings. They've always got their hearts in their mouths whenever they see a goalkeeper yeah. with the ball. Um, yeah. uh, but th- this will put that'll put that to rest because obviously you're very comfortable on the ball. With, with the style, was it mm. just an easy thing to kind of click in once Aggie said, look, you're getting the ball a lot more now? Um, yes and no. Yes, because that's kind of like how I like to play and it excites me instead of just getting it and smashing it down the field and legs hanging off by the end of the game. He just whack the ball all the time. Mm. Um, but also there's, he opened my eyes to different pictures in terms of, right, if those, let's say two or three options aren't on, then that means there's something else somewhere else. Yeah. So you always look like, my brain is always like, right, what, as soon as I've got the ball, it's like, right, that's not on. That is on, but that's also on what benefits that person more or the runner off of him. Mm. So it just makes you think all the time. And I think I got a little bit, because we started so well, I think I got a little bit comfortable in what we was doing. And that's probably is my fault. But now it's like you have to be on it because of the way we play. Otherwise, I'm going to give the ball away and they're probably going to score. Mm. Um, which will happen at some point. It's going to happen the way we play. It is what it is. Um, as as much as I don't want it to, eventually it mm. probably will happen. Um, but yeah, now it's like my brain is constantly like, right, we can do this. Like even I'm telling the lads, like play that pass because that person's out there or whatever, so on, mm. so on. So my brain is always ticking throughout the game, which which I've enjoyed a lot. Yeah, so it seems that you're enjoying your football. Yeah, I mean, the lads. I mean, the lads. Were, you know, we're just just below the playoff places. I mean, what do you think, Charlie? I mean, I think we've done. Considering everything that's gone on, I think we've done yeah. really, really well. Do you I think, think we've done excellent. Yeah, and it, it's almost like we've had two seasons already. But like, mm. what what do you think? Do you think it's achievable? Do you think we can maybe nick hundred percent, hundred percent? We are what we've come up against. We're hundred percent good enough. It's just whether we can be consistent enough. If I'm being completely honest, we've we've gone like four or five games, sometimes more, turning people over, getting good results. And then we have that one one or two days where it's like, mm, not quite at it. But that will come. We are still we're a very young group. So the more we do it, the better we will become. But there's a 100% a chance of us nicking in one of them playoff spots, especially from now to the end of the season, because we're playing everyone near enough around us. Mm. If we start beating them, we'll be well in them playoff spots. Has, has anything surprised you since... since um... Paul, Paul left. Was there anyone like in terms of change of game or like say like like John Hoofer? John Hoofer's had a great season. Um, He's been unbelievable. That's the, probably the biggest one. John started the season okay. I've said this to John so he knows. He started the season okay, but it's like he had a new leaf, le- lease of life all of a sudden. He's been he's been unstoppable at times. I think I can't remember how many. I think he's on eighteen assists, something like seven or eight goals. It's unbelievable. He didn't have a left foot before at the start of the season. Yeah. All of a sudden, he's got about 18 assists with his left foot. He's been class. Um, yeah, there's been a couple. Leggy as well. Leggy looked a little bit quiet at the start of the year. Since then, I think he's been I think he's been excellent. He's a yeah. real handful. Kian Moyes has been unbelievable. What a footballer he is, by the way. Yeah, glide. Ah, oh, every, oh, everyone's just gone levels. Like, there's no disrespect to Barnsley because I've got a lot of time for Barnsley and he done really well at the start. It's just unfortunate how it went. It's, it, we just kind of, I don't know, went another gear almost. Right, I must ask you, Charlie. Now, mm-hmm. will 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 you be here next season? Has, <laughs> has that been? Um, am I allowed to be cheeky and ask? Or I mean, you can the, be cheeky and ask. It's yeah. fine. Um, we're having conversations about it at the moment. Excellent. To be honest, um, yeah. So we'll, yeah, because we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, because we we well, what's, you, I mean, you may not have heard them, but like we 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 have got lots of songs for you. I know, usually... oh, I've heard. Yeah. I've enjoyed them. But they, they usually involve other defenders, but then those defenders go and we can't keep changing <laughs> it. But you're still here, as long as you're still here. No, I appreciate it. And I've, I've definitely heard them. They're nice to hear. Especially yeah. like, I think it's always hard as a goalie stepping into a club when you've had a Louis Rogers for the last however many years, come through the academy, played to however many games. It's like, am, am I, am I going to be taken in? But obviously I have to perform to be taken in first. So it is nice now that 
I'm hearing the songs and people come up to me after the games and talk to me and stuff like that. It's proper made me feel welcome. Good. Good. Well, I'm glad to. I mean, any other thoughts on the fan base? The fan base is unbelievable, home and away. That's all you hear. Like, what game was it? When we went to play Kingstonian away, mm. so we was walking out the tunnel, I could hear singing. I'm like, is that? I said to someone, is that a lot? Mm. Like, this is miles away. But to be fair to you guys, in your numbers, you're unbelievable. Nice but, one. No, no, Charlie, thank, thanks for your time, uh, chap. No problem um, at all. And, uh, well, hopefully we'll get a game soon that, if it don't get rained off. Um, yeah, I know. It'd be nice. Yeah. Um, listen, you have a good day. Take care, uh, Charlie. And um, I'll see you at the game, mate. All right? Yeah, top man. Thank you. Oh, Hastings number one. Take care, mate. Yeah. <laughs>